Hey photographers, I've been shooting with the Fujifilm X-S10 for a while and I've figured out its exposure settings and secrets. This video is deep and detailed. I'm going to start in full auto, which has a few tricks, and then I'll jump to manual and we'll make our way step by step back to auto. And then I'll show you how to take advantage of the settings for an expanded dynamic range. Uh, this video was recorded with firmware 1.02. Now, when you put the dial to auto, the camera disables many of the settings in the menu. Auto looks at the overall scene and decides what the right exposure settings should be. A soft press the shutter release to see what it decided. Across the bottom, from left to right, the shutter duration, labeled SS, the aperture, labeled F, and the ISO. There are three labels at the far left that are worth mentioning. Auto indicates you're in auto exposure mode. The square icon with the eye shows the meter mode. It can't be changed in auto, so we'll get back to that later. Uh, then, while you're holding the shutter release at the soft depressed position, EL in blue. Uh, that indicates the exposure is locked as long as you hold the soft press. The exposure will not change even if the lighting or the scene does. Uh, the soft press is awkward for some and it also locks focus. The AEL, auto exposure lock key on the back, locks only the exposure. However, it's disabled in full auto it might be useful in other modes. The lock is handy when the exposure isn't exactly what you want, because <laughs> sometimes in auto you can change the view slightly to change the auto exposure reading, then press and hold the exposure setting uh, reframe to the composition that you want. Now, there's another way to adjust the overall exposure. The dial under your right thumb adjusts the exposure compensation, sometimes called EV, making the image lighter or darker. The amount of adjustment is displayed screen left. The icon above the exposure display shows the dial used to set it. And note that exposure compensation is not a fourth exposure adjustment. It changes shutter duration, aperture, or ISO. And in this case, increasing the EV changes the shutter speed, and decreasing it changes the ISO. The EV range is five steps up and down, but depending on lighting for the scene, you may not be able to adjust it to the full range. It can't go further once the aperture is closed or opened all the way, or the ISO has reached its maximum or its minimum. Uh, there is an alternate display option for exposure compensation. Screen setup, disk custom setting, expo comp can be changed from scale to digit. The numerical EV adjustment appears at the bottom of the screen between the aperture and ISO. You can have both if you like. Uh, you may have noticed the large indicators display option in the menu. When you turn them on, they look like this. But note, now only the scale EV display is available. And the exposure mode is no longer displayed. Back to standard display. The overall exposure does have an impact on color. A slightly darker setting increases saturation. Now, also note that the setting on the lens's aperture ring is ignored in auto exposure. You don't need to set it to A or auto mode for auto aperture. Uh, back to disk custom setting and turn on the live view highlight alert. An overall meter reading may still overexpose the brightest parts of your scene. The highlight alert flashes overexposed highlights black and white. Uh, these areas will be blown out with no detail or definition, just white. Uh, you can use the exposure compensation to reduce or eliminate that. However, that may make parts of the scene too dark. Skip ahead to the dynamic range part of this video using the chapter markings for a solution to that. 
Turning the dial to M puts the camera in manual mode, as you see in the bottom left, but not really yet. There's an icon above shutter duration to indicate the back dial is used to adjust that setting. The aperture is adjusted with the ring on the lens. Now, incidentally, if you've set the lens's ring to A, or the lens doesn't have an aperture ring, use the front dial. Again, if it's active, that will display above the aperture setting. However, ISO is still set to auto, so while we've taken control of the aperture and shutter, the camera still controls the overall exposure using the ISO setting. A soft press reveals the ISO that will be used. Uh, now, there's no dial available to set the exposure compensation in manual mode. So here's the secret to access that. Use the button dial menu setting, function, scroll up to the fun dial, and change from the default default to the alternate default, which adds EV when the camera's set to M. Uh, when it's active, you'll see the icon above the exposure indicator. Now, let me explain why manual with auto ISO is my preferred exposure setting mode. With manual, I can select the meter to help me set the exposure. Uh, Fujifilm calls the meter photometry. If it's dimmed out and you see a little yellow face, it's being overruled by face detect, so turn that off. Well, for now, anyway. Uh, the multimeter evaluates the scene and determines an overall setting. For this scene, ISO 1250. Center-weighted, if that term isn't self-explanatory for you, judges the exposure mostly by the center of the image. In this case, ISO 500. Spot sets the exposure based on a small area in the center, ISO 800. Uh, in the focus menu, there's an option to make the focus spot also the meter spot, useful when you're setting the exposure for a specific subject that's either darker or brighter than the overall scene. This doesn't work when you're using manual focus. The brightest tulip on the left, ISO 160. The darker area of the center tulip, ISO 250. Selecting the right meter mode helps with exposure accuracy. Ah, there's one more display that helps with exposure, the histogram. It's also a screen display custom setting. Now, <laughs> there are entire videos about histogramming, but suffice to say that the white area should be pretty much centered inside the gray box. Too far left is dark, uh, too far right is too bright. Uh, but the histogram is not the boss of you. Make your own judgment. There's no rule in photography that says an image must be properly exposed. Whatever properly exposed might mean anyway. So the shutter and the aperture are in manual, and now what? A shorter shutter duration does three things. First, it freezes the image. For most of us, a shutter speed that's shorter than 125 or 200 will eliminate any blur caused by our movement, including both unsteady hands and the action of pressing the shutter release. Second, it freezes the action. A sports car, a cyclist, a hummingbird, or a waterfall. Depending on the lens, your distance from the subject and the speed of movement uh, that might require a setting as short as 2,000 or higher. Now, there are math formulas for this. <laughs> Trial and error is simpler. Now, but what the shutter duration really does is to manage the amount of light getting to the sensor. Shorter duration, less light. That means another setting must be changed to provide more light. In the other direction, a longer shutter duration you'll get blur. At 1 15th of a second, you'll blur pedestrians or car lights, and even longer durations are needed to blur water. You'll need a tripod. Aperture controls the lens opening, 
A larger opening, indicated by a smaller F number, say F4, provides a shallow depth of field, which means that objects behind or in front of the focus subject will not be in focus. Uh, that kind of soft background helps to focus the viewer's attention on your subject. It's a technique used for portrait photography. Uh, and a larger aperture also lets in more light. Now, go the other direction, and apertures like f16 and f18 or smaller provide a very wide focus field, perfect for architecture and landscape. Now, in manual mode, both are controlled, enabling me to get the effects I just described, but thanks to auto ISO, the camera still sets the overall exposure for you. ISO doesn't control the amount of light getting to the sensor. It controls the amount of amplification of the signal coming from the sensor. It makes the weak signal from a dark pixel louder. <laughs> that makes it brighter. <laughs> Let's have a look at how that works. Each of the three auto options have a default and a maximum sensitivity. But before you set the maximum, best to shoot some samples to determine your tolerance for high ISOs. These samples show you 3200, 6400, and 12800. And I've zoomed in to give you a better look at the noise. The XS10 has even higher extended ISOs. As the ISO goes up, the amount of noise in the image increases. The camera's computer uses the auto ISO settings to determine the ISO used for an image. Although exposure compensation can be adjusted in this mode, it may be preferable to set the ISO manually, as that's the only setting the exposure compensation is changing. If you need an exposure adjustment, setting ISO manually gives you a clearer view to see what's going on. Use the ISO key to open the menu. That gives you full control over the exposure. Use the display on the left. It was exposure compensation, but now it's an exposure meter and the histogram, along with the preview to judge the exposure. Sadly, all the exposure displays disappear while you're adjusting ISO. And in full manual, there's no exposure compensation. The icon for the dial has gone. Backing up to A, aperture priority, you now set the aperture. The camera sets the shutter duration. And S, shutter priority. You set the shutter. The camera sets the aperture. As before, a soft press reveals the settings, and the AEL lock key locks the exposure while it's pressed. The button dial settings can change the operation of both the exposure and focus lock from hold while pressed to activate and deactivate. There's no individual setting for each key. Now, press activates the exposure lock. A second press unlocks. And then P, program mode, uh, where, like full auto, the camera sets both aperture and shutter but you still have control over some of the settings, like photometry, that are disabled in full auto, and the exposure lock key works in program. Using program, the front dial selects other combinations of aperture and shutter that provide the same exposure result. Now, what to do with scenes that have a larger dynamic range than the camera can handle by default? You can adjust the tone curves, making adjustments, reducing them to flatten the curve for a less contrasty image, or increasing the settings, creating a steeper curve to give you a more contrasty image. The dynamic range setting provides settings of 100, 200, and 400%. Although, uh, note that 400 is only available at ISOs over 640. There's an icon screen right to show the current setting. And as you reduce the ISO, a yellow warning appears to indicate the dynamic range setting is being reduced. The alternate, D-range priority, is only available with auto ISO and has weak, 
and strong settings. I find this more effective than dynamic range. When it's on, it overrides both dynamic range and the tone curves. These controls and settings work for both stills and video. And for video, the exposure mode is set in the menu. To capture motion with the right amount of blur to make it look natural, use a shutter duration of 1 60th of a second for frame rates from 24 to 60. That means using either shutter priority or manual. In video, photometry defaults to matrix. There's no photometry setting in the video menu. And in video, the ISO limits can't be changed. Under changing light conditions, the auto aperture is visibly stepped. When I turn the light off and on, you can see the exposure jump. So I'd suggest you use auto ISO with manual exposure, which makes somewhat smoother transitions from on to off. Oh, one more thing, brackets. Taking multiple images with different exposure settings. On the drive menu, there's an ISO bracket with a one-stop range. When you press the shutter release, three files are saved from a single snap. And an auto exposure bracket, selected on the drive menu, but configured here in the camera menu. The difference between the images can be set from one-third to three stops, and up to nine frames can be saved. Handy graph at the bottom shows you. Now, there are also variants that only go up or down from the base setting. In continuous, the camera records all the images automatically, one after the other. That either gives you lots to choose from or a good stack to create an HDR image in post. Okay, I think I've detailed every exposure control. Please let me know in the comments what I might have missed or issues you've identified. I read and respond to all relevant questions and civil comments. Now, the assistance of a viewer with the handle Edmonotone, who asked some very interesting questions about adjusting exposure compensation, helped a lot with this script. Your questions always improve my videos. Now, you can improve your skills by making lots of images. Keep going until you drain your battery and fill up your card. Uh, practice before you get to the wedding or your holiday in Thailand. I would be honored to have you as a subscriber, but you could also become a member. Membership perks for those who join my channel include a private email address where members are whitelisted so you can correspond directly with me. But subscribers need not worry. No content will be behind a paywall. Please choose the option that suits your needs. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.